Patricia. I like that it's about a cat. My human is losing her mind. I wish she would go back to school and stop bugging me and petting me when I don't want to be petted. Can't she see that my tail is wagging and I have angry ears? Boys and girls, I think I'm losing it. Can you see Carl? Maybe she's imaginary, like Crenshaw. I've had her since I was 12. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Guys, I'm really bored. And I miss you. Chapter 14. <clears throat> With trembling fingers, I passed Robin's faded pink Hello Kitty towel to Crenshaw. Thoughts zap through my brain like summer lightning. I can see my imaginary friend. I can hear him. I can talk to him. He's using a towel. As Crenshaw climbed out of the tub, he reached for my hand. His paw was warm and soft and wet, big as a lion's with fingers the size of baby carrots. I can feel him. He feels real. He smells like wet cat. He has fingers. Cats do not have fingers. Crenshaw attempted to dry himself. Each time he noticed a tuft of fur out of place, he paused to lick it. His tongue was covered with little prickers like pink Velcro. Those things on your tongue are called papillae, I said. And then I realized that maybe this wasn't the best time to be sharing nature facts. Crenshaw glanced in the mirror. My, don't I look a fright? Aretha licked his tail helpfully. Off me, hound, Crenshaw said. He tossed the towel aside and it landed on Aretha. I need more than a towel. I need a good old fashioned shake. Crenshaw took a deep breath. His body rippled. Water droplets flew like crystal fireworks. When he'd finished, his fur was spiky. Aretha tossed off the towel, wagging crazily. Look at that ridiculous tail, Crenshaw said. Humans laugh with their mouths, dogs with their tails. Either way, it makes for pointless mirth. I pulled the towel away from Aretha. She snarled it between her teeth to play tug of war. What about cats, I asked. Don't you laugh? I am talking to a cat. A cat is talking to me. We smirk, Crenshaw said. We sneer. Rare, rarely we are quietly amused. He licked his paw and smoothed a spike of fur near his ear. But we do not laugh. I need to sit down, I said. Where are your parents and Robin? I haven't seen them in ages. Sleeping. I shall go wake them. No! I practically screamed it. I mean, let's go to my room. We need to talk. I'll leap onto their beds and walk on their heads. It will be amusing. No, I said. You will not walk on anyone's head. Crenshaw reached for the doorknob. His paw slipped off when he tried to turn it. Would you mind? He said. I grabbed the knob. Listen, I said. I just need to know something. Can everybody see you or just me? Crenshaw chewed on one of his nails. It was pale and pink, sharp as a new silver moon. I can't say for sure, Jackson. I'm a bit out of practice. Out of practice doing what? Being your friend. He moved to another nail. Theore theoretically, only you can see me. But when an imaginary friend is left to his own devices, alone and forgotten, who knows? His voice trailed off. He made a pouty face far better than anything Robin could pull off. It's been a long time since you left me behind. Perhaps things have changed. Perhaps the fabric of the universe has unraveled just a tad. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, what if you are visible? I can't let you just walk down the hall to my room. What if my dad wakes up to get a snack? What if Robin has to go to the bathroom? She doesn't have a litter box in her room? No, she does not have a litter box in her room. I pointed to the toilet. Ah, uh, yes, it's all coming back to me now. Look, we're going to my room. Be quiet, and if anybody comes out, just, I don't know, freeze. Pretend you're a stuffed animal. Stuffed? He sounded offended. I beg your pardon. Just do what I say. The hallway was dark, except for the bathroom light spilling onto the carpet like melted butter. Crenshaw moved silently for such a big guy. That's why cats are amazing hunters. I heard a soft creak behind me. Robin stepped out from her bedroom. I jerked my head to check Crenshaw. 
He froze in place, his mouth was open, and his teeth were barred, like one of those dusty dead animals on display at a natural history museum. Jax, said Robin in a slurry voice, who were you talking to? Chapter 15. Uh, Aretha, I said. I was talking to Aretha. I hated lying, but it wasn't like I had a choice. Robin yawned. Were you giving her a bath? Yeah. I looked back and forth, forth and back. Sister, imaginary friend. Sister, imaginary friend. Aretha ran over to nuzzle Robin's hand. Aretha's not wet, Robin said. I used the hair dryer on her. She hates the hair dryer. Robin kissed the top of Aretha's head. Don't you, baby? Robin didn't seem to see Crenshaw. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe because it was pretty dark in the hallway, or maybe because he was invisible, or maybe because none of this was really happening. She smells the same, Robin observed. Nice and doggy. I glanced at Crenshaw. He rolled his eyes. Oh, well, Robin said, yawning. I'm going back to bed. Night, Jax. Love you. Night, Robin, I said. Love you, too. As soon as her bedroom door closed, we retreated to my room. Crenshaw leaped onto my mattress as if he owned it. When Aretha tried to join him, he growled. It wasn't very convincing. I need to understand what's happening. I slumped against the wall. Am I going crazy? Crenshaw's tail rose and fell, making lazy S's in the air. No, you most certainly are not. He licked a paw. By the way, at the risk of repeating myself, how about those purple jelly beans? When I didn't answer, he settled into a donut shape, tail wrapped around himself, and closed his eyes. He purred the way my dad snores like a motorboat with engine problems. I stared at him. A huge, damp, bubble bath-taking cat. There's always a logical explanation, I told myself. And a part of me, the scientist part of me, really wanted to figure out what was going on. Still, a much bigger part of me felt certain that I needed this hallucination, this dream, this thing to disappear. Later, when Crenshaw was safely out of my house, not to mention my brain, I could think about what all this meant. A soft knock on my door told me Robin was back. She always knocks the beginning of wheels on the bus. Tap, tap, ta tap, tap. Jackson, please go to sleep, Robin. I can't sleep. I miss my trash can. Your trash can? Dad took my trash can to sell at the yard sale. I'm pretty sure that was a mistake, Robin, I said. Nobody wants to buy your trash can. It had blue bunnies on it. We'll get it out of the garage in the morning. Aretha made a move to sniff Crenshaw's tail. He hissed. I put my finger to my lips to shush him, but Robin didn't seem to hear anything. Night, Robin, I said. See you in the morning. Jackson? I rubbed my eyes and groaned the way I'd seen my parents do more than once. Now what? Do you think I can get another bed someday? Sure, of course, maybe even one with blue bunnies. Jackson? Yes? My room is scary with all my stuff in it. Could you come read me Lyle? I took a long, slow breath. Sure, I'll be right there, Robin sniffled. I'll just wait right here by your door, okay? Okay. I shot a glance at Crenshaw. Just give me a second, Robin. There's something I really need to do. Let's see. Chapter 16. I went to my window and opened it. Carefully, I pulled out the screen. Our apartment was on the ground floor. A few feet below the window, a cushion of grass waited. Goodbye, Crenshaw, I said. He opened one eye a bit, like something peeking from behind a shade. But we were having such a lovely time. Now, I said. I put my hands on my hips to show I meant business. Jackson, be reasonable. I came all this way. You have to go back to wherever you came from. Crenshaw opened his other eye. But you need me here. I don't need you. I have enough to deal with already. <clears throat> with a great show of effort, Crenshaw sat up. He stretched, easing his back into an upside down U. I don't think you understand what's going on here, Jackson, he said. Imaginary friends don't come of their own volition. We are invited. We stay as long as we're needed, and then, only then, do we leave. Well, I sure didn't invite you. Crenshaw sent me a doubtful look. His long, whiskey brows moved like strings on a marionette. I took a step closer. If you won't go, I'll make you go. I put my arms around his waist and yanked. It was like hugging a lion. The cat weighed a ton. Crenshaw dug his claws deep into the quilt my aunt 
my great aunt Trudy made when I was a baby. I gave up and let go. Look, Crenshaw said as he extracted his claws from my quilt. I can't go until I help you. I don't make the rules. Then who does? Crenshaw stared at me with eyes like green marbles. He put his two front paws on my shoulders. He smelled like soap suds and catnip in the ocean at night. You do, Jackson, he said. You make the rules. A foghorn bleated in the distance. I pointed to the windowsill. I don't need anybody's help, and I sure don't need an imaginary friend. I'm not a little kid anymore. Bladderdash. Is this because I hissed at the odorous dog? No. Could we at least wait till morning? There's a chill in the air, and I just took a bubble bath. No. Tap, 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 tap. Jax, it's lonely in this hallway. Coming, Robin, I called. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed a frog hop onto the windowsill. He gave a tiny, nervous croak. We have a visitor, I said, pointing. Maybe if I distracted Crenshaw, he'd move on. Did you know some frogs can leap so far it'd be like a human jumping the length of a football field? They're amazing jumpers. Hmm, they're amazing bedtime snacks, too, murmured Crenshaw. Come to think of it, I wouldn't mind a little amphibious morsel. I could see he was in full predator mode his eyes turning to dark pools, his rear wiggled, his tail twitched. See you, Crenshaw, I said. Fine, Jackson, he whispered, eyes lasering in on the frog. You win, I'll leave, do a bit of hunting. I am, after all, a creature of the night. Meantime, you get to work. I crossed my arms over my chest. On what exactly? The facts. You need to tell the truth, my friend. The frog twitched and Crenshaw froze, pure muscle and instinct. Which facts tell the truth to who? Crenshaw pulled his gaze off the frog. He looked at me, and to my surprise, I saw tenderness in his eyes. To the person who matters most of all. The frog jumped off the sill back into the night. In one magnificent leap, Crenshaw followed. When I ran to the window, all I saw was a blur of black and white streaking through the moon-tipped grass. I felt like I'd taken off an itchy sweater on a cold day. Relieved to be rid of it, but surprised by how chilly the air turned out to be. Little Crenshaw at the top.